If you are a Cakewalk by BandLab user and you are wondering what does the console module inside the Pro Channel for both channel and the buses do, well, stick around. I might be able to help you find out. You access the Pro Channel by selecting your track or your channel and then clicking this button right here, Show and Hide Pro Channel. And the module, by default, is available at the bottom of your Pro Channel. Let me open up all my other modules for this track, track number 14. So I've got an EQ, a compressor, a tube, and my console. You also find the console, the bus version, that you can place on your bus, right there. You can identify the difference to this last letter, B for bus, where if you select the track, that's C for the channel. And each module is an emulation of actual hardware, S-type, N-type, and A-type. And the differences are different characteristics, so tonal changes that the console module will introduce into your sound. In simple terms, as you increase the drive or decrease the drive, it changes the harmonics content of your sound. The difference between the channel console and the bus console is one thing that's missing, the trim, that allows you to increase the input gain to your console. Because some emulation of real hardware modules, they have a sweet spot. It's what's called a sweet spot. That's the spot where a signal level, once it reaches that level and above to a certain degree, it creates this very warm and inviting harmonics into your sound. So by using the trim, you can change the input signal's level to reach around minus 12 to minus 6 to minus 3 dB to get that sweet spot to get the best harmonics introduction to your sound. And why the bus version doesn't have it? Well, we assume by then all your signals are gain stage and they are at the right level. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate and you'll be able to hear what does the drive knob do to your sound and even more so, what does this toll button do? Toll stands for tolerance. To make this demonstration possible, I have a guitar, acoustic guitar track. I have simply duplicated that track, so these two tracks, 14 and 15, are identical. And there is a reason why I have done that, and you will discover in just a moment. Let's have a quick listen. We are listening track 14. Okay, if we unmute track 15, we should now actually hear the acoustic guitar twice as loud. Because they both add up. Now, if we inverse the phase of one of them, that means turn the signal upside down, they will cancel each other. And we should not be able to hear any sound at all. Let's give it a try. We can see signals going up, but no sound. Let me put the phase back to normal. Because track 15 has its phase inversed, it will cancel any signal from channel 14. The reason I've done that is that when I introduce the console, if there are any differences, we be able to hear it. And that's the reason I have duplicated the actual track so they are identical and inversed one of them so that if there is any difference introduced by the console module, we be able to hear it. Step one, let's enable the console module for track 14. And let's play it now. We can just hear it. Let me turn it off again, and it's silent, because it's cancelled. 
So by enabling and introducing console module onto our track, both tracks are no longer identical. Step two, let's introduce console for track 15. Just so that make it easy to identify which track we're looking at. Track 15, I have compressor visually available, but not enabled. There we go. Now that we enabled the console on 15, as well as 14, it's silent again, because they are identical. Until we introduce some drive. Or take some drive. Or we increase the input signal. Or decrease it. Now this experiment basically shows you how introducing the console on one of the tracks we change the signal. Something else is introduced into our sound. Of course, being digital world, BERT 14 and 15 having the same console module, that means the output of each of the channel are still identical and inversed, so we don't hear anything when BERT consoles are turned on in each of the tracks. In an analog world, no two audio gear are identical, unlike the digital world. Even at best, most resistors, capacitors and other components have 1% tolerance. That means they could drift by 1% either side of their actual value. Of course, in digital world, there is ones and zeros. Every single copy is identical. So, to emulate the analog world and to introduce this at least 1% change, in Cakewalk by BandLab's console module, there is a button called Tolerance. And when we enable this Tolerance, for all of the channels that we have added the console module, that means they're no longer the same. Now the console module of channel 14 and the console module of channel 15 are no longer the same. They have randomly selected to have a slightly different value. Now that value is saved for each of the project. Every single channel will have a different random number, but it's at the same time still saved for your own project. So that when you recall the project, those tolerances are still the same. So let's give it a try. I'm going to turn the tolerance off and then introduce them as I play the sound. At the moment, there is no tolerance. That means they're identical, even though both channel 14 and 15 have their console module enabled. It's all silent. Now I can just hear it in the background. Let's introduce tolerance for channel 14. Now you may not be able to hear it. So for that, I'm going to bring out Vaxengo's span so we can actually graphically see what is happening. Okay, this is Vaxengo's span graphic analyzer. Let's have a listen. Hardly anything. And we are looking very, very low signal. Down to 129 or 130 dB. It's virtually silent. If I disable one of the console modules for, let's say, uh, track 14, you can hear the difference that the console module is introducing. Enable it again, and it's silent. Now let's introduce tolerance. All of a sudden we have tiny audio signal that's coming through. Let's introduce tolerance for 15. And that gets a little bit louder as well. Because digitally they're no longer identical those console modules. Now to wrap up this demonstration, I've muted my track 14. 
I've got track 15 only going. And then I'm just going to play around with the drive. And then we can visually see what it's going to try to do to my acoustic guitar and the harmonics it's going to introduce. Turning the drive up. You don't hear a difference? Well, we haven't hit the sweet spot. Let's give it a try. Let's try the end type. Remember, subtle differences is all it's going to be introduced because you normally would have console modules on all of your tracks. So be gentle with its drive because the more introduced, harmonics can become distortion, which may or may not be something that you want, but you need to be subtle with it as well. Try the A type. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure you give me the thumbs up. And as always, if you have any comments, any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll try my best to answer them for you. Till next time, as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. Cheerio, guys.